Chapter 9, June 14th, 2033, Seattle, Washington, USA, 70th floor, Illini Building, negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, 0700 hours. All right, folks, here's the deal. Larry and I are taking the stairs down all 70 flights to the store at ground level. It's huge, so it will hopefully still have all sorts of good stuff for us. We are looking for two to three more people to go with us. Even as I was saying the last sentence, several people were standing and getting ready. Hillary and Gino immediately walked up. They were as close to a couple as anybody could be without the relationship. Gino was a squat guy, bald on top with a glorious beard halfway down his rotund belly. He wasn't so much in shape as embodying a shape. Still, I knew he was insanely strong. In reality, he was built like an ox, or more like a dwarf, actually. He was only 5'4", but he weighed as much as I did. Hillary was Texan. That was the first thing you noticed. She wore the flannel, the jeans, the cowboy boots. She even wore the hat at times. She was bubbly, basically the opposite of ultra-cynical Gino. She also stood at 5'7", making her a fair bit taller than him. They had been frenemies in the office from the start, and best friends otherwise. They fought like cats, always in some tiff or other. Yet, they were inseparable. If one was assigned a project, the other was working it within the hour. Jesse had given up on trying to make them work on anything alone. They were a great team, if a bit distracting. Larry walked up, a hulk of a man. He stood close to seven feet tall and nearly five feet wide. He was like a walking brick wall. On top of that, he rarely spoke. I nodded to him and he nodded back. Enough said. Linda was soon by my side. When do we leave? I turned to her, uncomfortable. You should stay here. Why, because I'm a woman? She snarked back. I could see little flames behind her eyes. I had to be careful. No, that has nothing to do with it. Hillary is coming with us. Then why can't I go? I looked to the others for support, but they backed up. Linda was infamous for her temper. Look, you were a nurse before you joined on here, right? Yeah, and that's why I would be perfect to go with you. I shook my head. You need to stay up here. We're seriously lucky that nobody has fallen sick or been injured by the cold so far. Larry butted in before Linda could reply. I was a medic in the military. I can look after the team. I served as a corpsman for four years before I became an engineer. It's fine. I realized that I really needed to get to know my co-workers better. I hardly knew any of them. I nodded and turned back to Linda. Besides, if we encounter anybody, we'll send them up here where it's safe and warm. I don't think we will, but all the better that you're here if we do. Linda glared at me, then at Larry. Fine but I'm not happy about it. You all better come back in one piece. Of course, that's when Tracy decided she needed to join us. She quietly stated, I would like to join the group. I feel it is something that God is directing me to do. Uh, sure, Tracy. You know it's going to be an extremely tough hike, right? I looked her over. Tracy was a petite, mousy woman. She didn't have well-defined muscles or a lot of bulk. She was actually pretty bland, from her mouse-brown hair and dim brown eyes to her carefully tasteless charcoal pantsuit. She even had the Minnesota accent. The ensemble was completed with a pair of gray flats without visible socks. I gave her a questioning look. So, you know it's actually so far below freezing that people can die in a short time, right? Oh, yes. But the Lord God has directed me to follow you, and he has said I will be protected. Right, I said, dragging it out. I didn't say it for dramatic effect, it was because I couldn't wrap my head around religion in this setting. If you think you can keep up, you're welcome to join us. Like I said before, it's going to be rough. She nodded, evidently thinking she was ready for anything that would come at us. I thought differently, but maybe she would prove me wrong. All right, folks, that makes five of us. Let's gather a few things and get ready for the trek. Gino, Hillary, Larry, and Tracy all nodded. Tracy's head stayed bowed with her mouth barely moving. I dismissed it and moved on. We dug into the supply room for the heavy winter gear. 
It fit well enough, though Larry was uncomfortable in the tight-fitting garments. Tracy was on the opposite end of the spectrum, with baggy clothes hanging off of her petite frame. After dressing, we continued to search, but ultimately found little of use. There were plenty of office supplies, paper and pens, spare parts for computers and the like. There was nothing for long hikes, no backpacks and very little water. We each took a single bottle, noting that there were only a few hundred bottles in total. We did find a few concessions, such as battery-powered lanterns. None were good for exploring because they had no shielding for the user. We ended up finding a box of flashlights with dedicated batteries. We each took one for the trip. As we gathered at the office door, shivering in the cold of the uncontained office, Jessie approached us. She was as stoic as ever, despite being in the same clothes as us and having even less body fat to stave off the cold. She looked at each of us in turn as we held the unnatural silence. Thank you, all of you, for volunteering for this. This is potentially a deadly trip, though I obviously hope otherwise. Dante, you lead wisely. Larry, don't let him be an idiot. Gino, you're the rock of the group. Keep them grounded. Hillary, you're the only one who can keep the dwarf in line. They both smiled at the comment, though Gino adopted a well-mannered scowl. Tracy, please watch over them. I know you to be sensible. We all nodded in turn, ready to leave on the trip. Then Tracy spoke up. I would like to pray for the group. I paused, gauging the reactions of everybody else. It seemed I wasn't alone, since everybody stopped and turned. I looked back at Jessie, but she shrugged. Dear Lord, began Tracy. I rolled my eyes, though I was careful to do it away from Tracy's downturned gaze. Then I saw Jessie looking at me disapprovingly. I schooled myself and controlled my reactions. Tracy continued. Though you have brought about the end times, we honor your wisdom. Please, let us see as you do, to be wise in our actions. We wish to please you with our efforts in bringing a better life to those that depend on us. Please guide us with your hand, give us your wisdom for what to seek, and your insight for where we need to look. Protect us in your divine sight. We wish to honor you in our efforts. In your name, amen. We all bowed our heads, mumbling some sort of affirmation. Tracy's overtly religious nature was a surprise to me, though it was rapidly becoming obvious that it wasn't surprising just to me. Jessie saved us. Thank you, Tracy. I hope that will be helpful. She met my eyes and was clearly trying to communicate telepathically. Whatever the message was, I missed it. All right, folks, head out, I said as I looked around. When my eyes met Gino's, he lit up. I've got this, he said in his characteristic drawl. He confidently led the group through the office door into the elevator lobby. He happily stomped over to the buttons and mashed one with his beefy hand. He stood for a moment, then mashed it again. What the? By the great fuck! He started. He mashed the button again, expecting the button to light up. I saw a flare of annoyance from Tracy, though the others looked pretty entertained. Every little bit of light counted in the new world of eternal darkness. Gino! "'Blast it, I know!' he shouted, suddenly red. He was probably flushed from the cold air. It was obviously below freezing, though I didn't think it was below zero. Guy should have put on a beanie. He walked quickly over to the fire stairs and roughly shoved the door open. The cold air was starting to settle in, getting to know my bones well. I wasn't overly concerned, because we had a full seventy flights to climb down, then back up. The trip was going to be awful. At least I had good people to take it with.